Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss about anatomy of the rectum. Rectum is the distal part of the large intestine, about 12 cm in length. Its lower part is dilated, called rectal ampulla. Rectum is lacking the large intestinal common features like that of circulations, appendices it is quickly, and tinea coli. So these are not present in the rectum, although it is a part of the large intestine. Rectum is not straight. Its name is rectum, that means straight, but rectum is not straight. It is curved anteroposteriorly and from side to side. Location in the posterior part of the true pelvis, you can also call it lesser pelvis, in front of the lower three sacral vertebra, sacral vertebra 3, sacral vertebra 4, sacral vertebra 5, and coccyx. It extends as a continuation of the lower end of the sigmoid colon to the anorectal so from sigmoid colon, colon to the anorectal ring is the extension of the rectum. Okay, so this is the sigmoid colon here. This is the rectum and this is the anal canal. We are seeing the structure related to the, the rectum here. Okay. So here is a sigmoid colon from it ends and rectum begins. Sigmoid colon has tinea coli, rectum has no tinea coli, rectum has no appendices epiploike. Okay, so here by the side of the rectum we we'll get the fatty tissue here, the escrital fossa here containing fatty tissue. Okay, and rectum we are seeing here. The rectal folds, we have three rectal folds, and seen here one due section. Okay, and this is the lining epithelium lined by simple columnar epithelium, it contains the intestinal gland and also the goblet cells. Curvature and peritoneal relations the rectum is a midline structure with two anterior posterior. Structure with two antero posterior curve that is sacral flexor and perineal flexor. Sacral flexor at the beginning, perineal flexor in the end, where there is an anorectal ring, okay, and three lateral curvature like upper lateral to the right, convex to the right, middle lateral, convex to the left, and the lower lateral convex to the right. So we have three curves here, lateral curve and two anteroposterior curve. One is sacral flexor and there is perineal flexor. Upper part of the rectum is covered with peritoneum in front and lateral. Middle third is covered by the peritoneum anteriorly. Lower third of the rectum is dilated and is devoid of peritoneum. Okay, we call it ampulla, ampulla, the dilated part of the lower dilated part of the rectum. Okay, so here is the rectum and this is the muscle, piborectalis muscle. It helps in formation of the perineal flexor. Okay, this is the lower part of the rectum. This part is also dilated here, this is the dilated. And the muscle, these are part of the, the levator ani muscle. Okay. So the pivorectalis and this is the pivococcygeus muscle. We continue to the coccyx and around the rectum. Pivo, this is the symphysis pivis here. This is the body of the pivis. This is the coccyx. This is the rectum. Okay. It's two flexor. One is the sacral flexor anteriorly and lower part will another flexor and posteriorly that is the perineal flexor okay we got that 
these are the two flexure anterior posterior the sacral flexure and the perineal flexure okay here we are saying that mucosal fold we have transverse mucosal fold superior transverse transverse rectal fold okay it is not we will not say mucosal we will say rectal fold fold it contains the mucosa then sub mucosa and muscle also extend here so it is the rectal fold the superior superior transverse rectal fold again muscle extend there mucosa sub mucosa muscle so this is middle transverse rectal fold inferior transverse rectal fold okay this is more prominent okay this work as a support for the collection of the feces this is a in a shelf like manner feces are collected here and on feces in the ampullary area there will be stimulation for defecation okay like other part of the intestine we have inner circular layer outer longitudinal muscle layer lined by simple columnar epithelium with intestinal gland like the crypts of uh, liver cone as well as the a lot of unicellular goblet cell lining epithelium of the rectum visceral relationship is important to us anteriorly in male upper two thirds is related to the recto vesical pouch the pouch between the rectum and the urinary bladder and coils of ileum that is the terminal part of the ileum the small intestine that is present there lower one third is related to the base of the urinary bladder terminal part of the ureters and seminal vesicles vas deferens also called ductus deferens and the prostate anteriorly in female upper two third is related to the pouch of douglas containing coils of ileum the small intestine and small amount of peritoneal fluid very few milliliter the lower one third of the rectum is related to the lower part of the vagina posteriorly relations are the same for both the male and female these are sacral segment two to five actually it should be three to five not two to five so it should be three to five okay you can correct it here okay it should be three three to five okay okay so we got that so it is three to five the coccyx anococcyx is ligament pyriformis muscle okay coccyx levoteranium muscle okay so a pyriformis levoteranium coccyx muscle median sacral superior rectal lateral sacral vessels lower part of the sympathetic chain of ganglion we have sympathetic chain of ganglion extending from the base of the skull to the coccyx and we will get here posteriorly the part, lower part of the sympathetic chain of ganglion these are paravertebral ganglion and two sympathetic chain of ganglion unite in front of the coccyx it is called ganglion impact we will also get ventral rami of s3 s4 s5 and coccygeal one nerves pelvic splanchnic nerve lymph nodes lymphatics and certainly a lot of adipose tissue okay we got that okay so here anatomy of the rectum support of the rectum what structure supports the rectum the pelvic floor formed by the liver and eye muscle lateral ligament of the rectum recto vesical fascia fascia of denon villus the pelvic peritoneum the fat bodies of the ischiorectal fossa and certainly the perineal body these are the supports of the rectum if any one of them or many of or multiple of them are damaged then the rectum will not be supported rectum will be prolapsed we have two type of prolapse incomplete prolapse of the rectum is the mucosal prolapse due to forceful straining 
and lack of sub mucosal support. Complete prolapse, we call procedentia, is a complete protrusion of the whole thickness of the rectal wall through the anus. It is caused by lack of support of the rectum, deep rectovesical fossa in the male, deep rectoitrial fossa in the female, chronic constipation, weakness of the sphincter muscle, internal anal sphincter, external anal sphincter, aging process, and lack of hormone also especially in the female and also in starvation, chronic starvation, supports are lost, there is chance of prolapse of the rectum, complete prolapse, there is procedentia. Large supply and lymphatic drainage of the rectum, that is very important to us, okay. Arterial supply, superior rectal artery, branch of the inferior mesenteric artery, middle rectal artery, usually a branch of the internal iliac artery, median sacral artery, it is the dorsal branch from the lower part of the abdominal aorta just before bifurcation, venous drainage, superior rectal vein, drain into the inferior mesenteric vein, that is opening into the splenic vein, that is a part of the of the portal system, middle rectal vein is a tributary of the internal iliac vein that is a part of the systemic or caval system. Lymphatic drainage limb from the upper half of the rectum drains to the pararectal lymph nodes, sigmoid lymph nodes, then to the inferior mesenteric lymph nodes. Lymph from the lower half of the rectum mostly drains into the internal iliac lymph nodes. So we got the blood supply, venous drainage and the lymphatic. Okay, here we are seeing the blood vessel, the superior rectal artery, branch of, branch of inferior mesenteric artery, superior rectal vein, that is a tributary of the inferior mesenteric vein, that is a tributary of the splenic vein, that is a tributary of the portal vein. Okay, here we have the middle rectal artery, branch of internal iliac artery, Middle rectal vein, yes, middle rectal vein is tributary of internal iliac vein. These are caval or systemic, okay. And inferior rectal artery, branch of the internal parental artery, inferior rectal vein, tributary of internal parental vein, okay. This is uh, also caval or systemic. Only the, the superior rectal vein, that superactual vein that is a portal system or systemic portal system and the middle rectal vein and inferior vein are systemic or the caval system. So in case of cirrhosis of liver we will get hemorrhoid formation. Okay we have the venous plexus this are also connected to the artery. So we have the venous plexus and this venous plexus are very much prominent in case of cirrhosis of liver, liver cancer, okay, that happens and there may be hemorrhoid or there may be some support system is weak, even without cirrhosis or or, or cancer of the liver, someone may develop hemorrhoids or piles. It may also run in some families. Support system of the blood vessel may be weak. There is free communication between the, uh, between the external and internal hemorrhoidal veins as well as there is feeding of the artery and vein, artery venous anastomosis here in the wall of the rectum. And rectum is one of the common site of portocaval anastomosis because we have the portal system, we have the caval system. Okay, this is caval of systemic. This is the portal vein tributary ultimately from the inferior mesenteric vein, splenic vein, the portal vein. Okay, again we are getting the artery, median sacral artery, branch of the abdominal aorta posteriorly. Median sacral vein, usually a tributary of the left common iliac vein. Okay, we got that. The superior rectal vein, that is a tributary of the inferior mesenteric vein, that is a portal system with the, with the 
inferior rectal vein that is that mostly supply the anal canal okay that is a tributary of internal parental vein middle rectal vein is a tributary of the internal iliac vein so this is systemic this is systemic okay the this two caval and this is this vein is is portal so there is chance of porto caval anastomosis hemorrhoid in case of increased portal hypertension or blockage of the portal vein okay we got that so we try here this is the lymphatic drainage as we discussed from the upper part we we'll go to the internal iliac lymph node mostly go to the superior following the superior artery to the inferior mesenteric lymph node okay from the lower part of the uh, of the rectum from the anal canal extreme lower part of the anal canal the lymph node go to the inguinal lymph node but mostly rectum lymph node goes to the inferior mesenteric lymph node and internal iliac lymph node from the anal canal we are getting to the superficial inguinal lymph nodes okay the lymph node drainage is very important because rectum is a site of cancer rectal carcinoma is not uncommon and the cancer cell may spread through the lymphatic initially then through the vein then it extends locally that's to the surrounding tissue but initial spread of cancer through the lymphatic channel not supply of the rectum here rectum is innervated by both sympathetic l1 l2 and parasympathetic s2 s3 s4 nerves via the inferior mesenteric and inferior hypogastric plexuses sympathetic nerves are vasoconstrictor they constrict the blood vessel inhibitory to the rectal muscle that is it relaxes the rectal muscles okay and motor to the internal anal sphincter tighten the internal anal sphincter parasympathetic nerve are constricted to the rectal muscle okay it constricts the rectal muscle but relaxes the internal anal sphincter sensation of rectal distension is carried by the parasympathetic nerve there is s2 s3 s4 pelvic splanting nerve okay pain sensation from the rectum is carried by both sympathetic and parasympathetic nerve okay so two type of mucosal fold present inside the rectum longitudinal folds are temporary when there is a, the, there is collection of feces there is defecation this disappear transverse fold horizontal folds or houston's ball or plica transversalis are permanent and become prominent when rectum is distended okay the upper fold at the upper end middle fold the largest and is most constant we have seen that along the curvature located in the upper part of the rectal ampulla the lowest fold is inconstant and is about one inch below the middle fold okay high layers of anatomy of the rectum and clinical anatomy okay we have covered the location curvature and mucosal folds visceral relationship anterior posterior male and female supports of the rectum is very important otherwise rectum will prolapse blood supply nerve supply and lymphatic drainage now we have to also cover part here to the rectal prolapse we just discussed in the previous slides we must know what is rectocele okay what is rectocele that is important to us rectal prolapse and here another ideology is here rectocele rectocele is important to us okay okay rectocele is the protrusion of anterior wall of the rectum sagging or moving forward of the anterior wall of the rectum to the posterior vaginal wall may go to the introitus it is seen rectocele in case of postmenopausal woman or perineal injury or repeated vaginal delivery of the baby okay or some type of cancer may lead to rectocele or surgery may lead to rectocele okay protrusion of the anterior wall of the rectum to the posterior vaginal wall major rectum 
The rectum has no mesentery, but there is perirectal fat that surrounds the rectum, containing blood vessels and nerves, and lymphatics are called majorectum. That is, so the resection of the rectum is gone, is done through that, okay, and the lymphatics, lymph nodes should be removed in case of rectal carcinoma resecting surgery, abdominal perineal resecting surgery of the of the rectum. Carcinoma of the rectum, okay, that is very common uh, condition, okay. So, it is quite common, may not be very common, but it is also not uncommon, carcinoma of the rectum. So, the cancer cell spread through the lymphatics and it should be removed along with the, the, with the major rectal lymph node, fatty tissue, blood vessel, a part of the rectum uh, and the entire part of the rectum should be taken out by abdominal perineal resection as well as what to do there should be a colostomy is made on the left iliac fossa there will be artificial ana opening anal opening like that of the anal opening colostomy colon is pulled to the left iliac fossa and colostomy bag is placed there as a management of carcinoma of the rectum proctoscopy is an instrument to assess the anal canal and rectum Sigmoidscopy is an instrument to visualize the sigmoid rectum and the sigmoid column. Digital power rectal examination is very important, especially to diagnose the disease like prostatic hypertrophy, prostatic carcinoma, or also to assess the perineal uh, body strength and rectal ring strength. So, digital power rectal examination is a very important examination. No PR examination, no surgical examination is complete okay we have done that now and that's all about the anatomy of the rectum if you have any question please feel free to ask me please share the information with your friends please support my channel please subscribe me have a nice wonderful and blessed day bye now